Hello everybody. So today I want to do a video about the lumber scales on the Woodland Mill sawmill. And this really applies to uh, any brand sawmill. They all tend to use uh, similar types of scales. <clears throat> and uh, this, this is a question I got from a viewer. Um, please, if you have uh, ideas for videos, uh, let me know in the comments. I, I love hearing feedback and uh, I've got some great ide ideas for videos from you guys. But uh, one viewer asked for a video about how these lumber scales work, and I thought that was a great idea because these can be really confusing. Um, there are many cases where you don't even need to use the specialized scales, um, so I thought this would be a really good topic. So I want to start with the uh, yellow scale that Woodland Mills includes, and this is magnetic, so you can <clears throat> take this off or reposition it or swap it for different scales. And on this particular scale, over on the left, are true increments and what I mean by true is if you put a measuring tape up against this scale uh, you're going to match um, the increments on the measuring tape namely these major increments are exactly an inch the minor ones are a quarter half three quarters and so this is a you know true scale <clears throat> and I usually I use this one most most of the time and what I've done is I've uh, zeroed mine. You can do it by positioning the scale or positioning the marker so that this gives me height off of the bunk. And so I always know where my blade is uh, relative to the bunk. Uh, you know, zero would mean I'm sawing into the, the metal of the bunk. And then as you go up from there, you're uh, looking at the height above the bunk. And um, I use this most often because it's really easy to do math with this one. It's kind of an absolute scale. You know, it's, it's reference to the bunk, and uh, it's always true to the height off of the bunk. Over here on the right, they have a 4-4 scale, and that's a terminology in lumber that we'll talk about in a minute. If you were to put a ruler up against uh, this scale, what you'd find is that between every major mark, it's actually 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. And so this is sort of a, they took this normal scale and they scaled it, stretched it, um, you know, by a factor of uh, one and three sixteenths, basically, to make larger increments. And these one, two, three, four, well, those don't correspond to inches anymore. Those correspond to number of boards that you're going to be cutting at these thicknesses. And so let's go over here to my uh, table and talk more about these custom scales <clears throat> and and really anytime you see a custom scale that's not a true scale uh, it's the you know it's someone's trying to be clever and work out the increments needed to cut lumber at to get some desired product in the end so a 4 4 scale again the increments for that are 1 and 3 16 of an inch if you subtract about a 16th for kerf, that would leave a rough sawn uh, green board that's about one and an eighth of an inch. The idea being that after that dries and after you surface the uh, faces, the dressed board for 4-4 lumber is 13 sixteenths of an inch. And um, looking at my barn there, uh, that siding was all purchased. Uh, that was 4-4 lumber, all three, uh, 13 a sixteenth of an inch thick uh, when it you know came off the stack and so um, um, that's the four four now if we go to five four the increments on that are actually going to be one and a half inches subtract some kerf and you're going to get a rough sawn cut of one and seven sixteenths inches and the idea there is that after drying and dressing that would give you a one and a quarter inch board okay and then Six quarter scale the increments there are one and three quarter inches. You're going to end up with a one and eleven sixteenths inch rough sawn board. And uh, after drying and dressing, that should give you a one and a half inch finished board. And so that's really the reason for these scales. Um, you know, if you're if you're into production lumber and you you want to follow conventions, then you know, great, pick up these scales and. And go through this you know process of uh, different sizes knowing that you know your if your goal is dressed lumber that's what you're going to get to uh, for everybody else these really aren't so important you're probably going to pick 
saw increments based on what you know about your lumber, uh, which is what I do, and I'll get to that in a minute. The last two scales I want to talk about, though, are this uh, white ruler that Woodland Mills give you, gives you, and that's got, it says one inch on one side, two inch on the other, and what that does, if you put a measuring tape up against here, you'd find that the distance between the major marks on this scale is actually one and a sixteenth, and then the major marks on this scale, the distance is two and a sixteenth. And what they've uh, attempted to do, to do here is to just remove the saw kerf, the amount of wood you lose to the you know, blade thickness as it cuts. Uh, they've attempted to remove that so that if you follow these marks down, uh, again, the increments are one and a sixteenth and two and a sixteenth. That's going to leave you with a one inch rough sawn board or a two inch rough sawn board. And so, you know, this is kind of a no brainer way. If you want to cut one inch boards, not have to think about kerf, just follow this scale, follow these increments. And after they're cut, you know, you, you'll, you'll have the, the boards of, of whatever thickness you want. Um, don't, don't try and do any math with this scale. In fact, don't try and do any math with any of these scales adjust things or you know saw beams or whatever forget it it's going to be super confusing that's not the point these are really meant to slice off board lumber you know where you want to go bang 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 down through a cant and and cut the slabs off for some particular thickness with a goal at the end if you're if you're doing posts and beams then you're better off going back to that absolute scale on the mill and um, working any math out yourself uh, because that makes more sense for large pieces of lumber. Now, um, I mentioned uh, I like to kind of figure things out myself. And what I've found that's useful for me is I bought these small magnetic rulers off of Amazon. Um, and I've got a few of these. What I do is I come here with a Sharpie and I make my own increments for types of boards that I want to cut. For, for the most part, all of the lumber I use, I use uh, either green or I let it dry, but it's still rough sawn when I use it. Especially for framing lumber, there's not a real need for me to plane it or dress it. So I tend to be most interested in the dimension of a rough sawn board, uh, either when it's green or after it dries for a few months. And so I've made up my own custom scales with increments that are of relevance to me. This particular one, my increments are one and five eighths. And I know that if I follow these marks when I cut rough sawn boards, uh, that gives me a green two by four that's just a little bit more than one and a half inches. And uh, you know, when it dries, it's just gonna be a little bit less than one and a half inches, but it's just a real good size, easy to work with. Uh, it's very, very close to a standard uh, two by lumber thickness. And so this is the scale that I like to use um, when I'm cutting two by lumber. What I normally do with this is uh, I will square up a cant using this absolute scale. And I'll try and get this as close as I can to some multiple of two by lumber so that I can get a, you know, a, um, fixed number of uh, boards out of this without without any waste. Uh, sometimes I know, hey, maybe the first board or the last board is going to be a little bit uh, rough. And I, you know, if I'm cutting two by six, I'll know, hey, maybe that first and last board, I'll probably uh, edge it to make a two by four. But that's still lumber that I can get out of it. So I'll try and size my cant using this absolute scale. And then what I'll do is uh, after I make my uh, final squaring up cut on that cant. I'll come in here and I'll slide this guy underneath move it over here and I'll move it up so that my red mark is right where the blade currently is and then I'll just start lowering the blade and chasing these marks um, you know until I get down through my cant and that gives me really quick and easy uh, way to slice off those uh, two by lumber pieces without having to do any math. It's been done for me here. Again, I use this absolute scale to rough out the cant. And I do try and make sure I come out 
somewhere that's going to give me a dimension that won't have any waste at the end or minimal waste. Um, and, you know, if I wanted to, I could follow this scale and calculate curve and all this and that. But, heck, just use, let the ruler do your math for you. Uh, set up a, that custom scale. And you just really have to chase these marks uh, down through the cant to get your lumber. And <clears throat> you don't even have to, you know, put these marks on a ruler. I do it because it's convenient. But you can put some masking tape over here. Use a tape measure to measure off your increments that you want. Um, you could get, I've seen a magnetic whiteboard material. You could cut that into a strip. Use a tape measure to put your increments on it and then attach it up to your your board here your ruler board on the sawmill so there's a lot of ways to do this um, and again you know really this needs to be something that you're in charge of you're the one sawing the lumber it's, it's probably your your wood your logs came from your trees you're you're making this lumber for your projects you know what you want and so you should be the one that works out the, the increments uh, that are going to be best for your project. So, you know, these, these typical scales, you know, again, this is really commercial lumber with the idea uh, of taking a, you know, a mill cut and working it towards a, a dressed board. Probably not relevant to many of us. These might be a little bit more relevant on this white scale in that it's going to be a no-brainer way to give you one inch or two inch boards. But for custom use, for cutting your own stuff, you know, I think it it's really makes sense for you to set up your own scales and follow them. Um, and uh, that kind of puts you in charge. It means you have an understanding how those scales work. And I think a lot of the confusion people get when they get a sawmill and they try and use these scales is they don't really understand the point of this. Uh, and for their, their purposes, it probably doesn't have a point. I mean, you know, I can't think of the last time when I was sawing lumber for a project or a building um, where I cared about the final dressed and dried dimension of, of lumber. I mean, that's just not, not relevant for me. And I mean, I've even built some, you know, pretty nice furniture um, with some of the lumber I've milled. And um, I'm still not really concerned with this dimension. I tend to take, you know, what nice boards I can out of a log, put them aside, let them dry for a couple of years, pull them out, and you know, build the furniture with whatever I got. I'm not really so much focused on these. These are really, you know, for production, and uh, you don't have to confine yourself to this stuff um, when you're in charge of the mill and the projects. So I hope that was helpful. Again, uh, I appreciate the suggestion to uh, do a video on this. If anyone has other suggestions, please let let me know. In the uh, next week or so, I'm going to make uh, a couple more videos. Um, I'm going to make one talking about this inexpensive tow board setup that's great for a home sawmill. And then um, it's been a couple months since I built my sawmill stand and put everything together. And um, I need to run a string down this track and, and check it to make sure everything's flat and true. I'm sure it's moved a little bit. I mean, I've had the base lumber has dried, we've gone through a season change, so I'm going to make another video about how I uh, check the sawmill bed and uh, get it back to true, and so look for those in the next couple weeks. Till then, thanks for watching.